This is a bathroom I installed about five, six years ago and I took a series of pictures and uploaded to YouTube. So uh, that's what I'm doing now. Uh, just to do something different. Uh, I did this with another bathroom that I had done a few years ago as well and I uploaded that uh, also. So anyway, uh, first things first, this is the backboard on this bathroom is a uh, called dent shield and it has a waterproofing membrane on the surface and then uh, what I usually do when I use this stuff is I waterproof the corners and seams uh, so that you can have a completely waterproof um, substrate and uh, this is not a step you want to skip when installing a shower stall you always want to use waterproofing and then another thing about um, now, uh, wet areas like a shower stall is you always want to use a good quality thin set. Don't use mastic. Mastic is not good for a wet area. And uh, this tile that you see here is a porcelain tile, and uh, it's very hard. Uh, has a very hard surface. So um, these uh, spaces that you see here uh, are horseshoe spaces and uh, they're uh, made of a hard plastic so when you stack tiles one on top of the other uh, they don't crush and uh, this bathroom in particular uh, like I said was is a porcelain tile and it's on a diagonal and when you do on a diagonal uh, what you want to do is fold the corners like you see here and what folding the corners means is you uh, cut your tile that goes in the corner and you save the piece uh, that falls off and you use it to go around the corner and the reason you do this is because you want you also want the shading of the tile to match because uh, if you don't do that it just doesn't look right it looks unprofessional and it doesn't look even um, here's another example of a folded corner uh, where I, the cutoff is used to go around the corner in this way the um, like I said the grout lines match and the color shading matches <coughs> Yeah, when you're doing a, uh, a corner which is a half tile, it's uh, easier, but when the tile is not going to be cut in half, it's a little bit harder. And uh, so the piece that falls off, you use it to go around the corner. Now, if the color of the tiles are of different shades, as you can see here, um, it's, it looks better uh, than if you were to cut uh, a different tile and, sh and put a different shaded tile in that corner. Uh, when the tile is all of the same color and shading uh, then it doesn't matter if you save the piece you just want to uh, make sure that you make the grout lines uh, match now these <coughs> uh, this shell also had um, some arches that can be very difficult to do because um, you got to segment the tiles and then there's a lot of different lines and different angles that have to uh, be evenly uh, spaced uh, so that you get an even grout line all the way around so diagonals are not for the faint of heart uh, they can be difficult uh, to install and um, so you know you want to always just make sure that you got even grout lines all the way around so uh, these arches as I said uh, are, are um, have segmented pieces of bull nose and then what you do is uh, well what I did anyway is I installed them the day before so that the tile would be set and then I installed a piece of tile that went up to the arch the next day so that the bull nose would actually support the tile and they wouldn't slide down This bathroom also had a, a couple of recessed uh, cubbies or niches, and um, it had a six by six tile instead of the twelve by twelve inside the niche area. And uh, the, the uh, horizontal border uh, was of the same type of tile, the same line of tile, but obviously of a different uh, uh, size. And uh, I always put the uh, bench seat uh, when I've got slabs. I always usually put the um, slab in and then I cut around it 
and this uh, on the floor was the same tile only it had um, was installed on a pinwheel pattern and uh, square to the room and uh, <coughs> pinwheel pattern is also called a hopscotch pattern um, and you also want to make sure that you install um, always use a good quality thin set when installing tile don't buy a cheap brand or, or a cheap uh, thin set because uh, that the thin set is what is going to hold uh, your bathroom together so installing um, using a, a lower quality thin set is never a good idea especially on porcelain tile you might get away with it with a ceramic tile but a porcelain tile is very dense and very um, non-porous so it doesn't absorb uh, the um, thin set into the back of the tile and uh, create a good bond so anyway at the end here you're gonna see uh, a video of this bathroom uh, which I installed uh, quite a few years ago and uh, the video is gonna be of the bathroom after it was in service for about five years uh, the grout that I used on the walls was actually an epoxy grout which is um, um, not a, uh, an easy thing to install uh, if you don't follow the directions completely and you can, sometimes you can get a lot of residue <coughs> left on the tile so you gotta make sure when you're using an epoxy grout that you follow the directions carefully and uh, otherwise so um, like I was saying uh, the video at the end here is going to be of the bathroom after it had been in service for about four or five years. So, um, hope you enjoyed uh, these series of pictures. And if you have any comments, just uh, leave them, uh, leave a comment, and I'll try and uh, respond if you have a question or two.